Good evening. Welcome to St. Florence the Martyr Parish. This evening we are celebrating the second Sunday of Easter. It is also the Feast of Divine Mercy. Our presiders for the Mass is Father Richard and Deacon Steve.
of everlasting mercy, who in your very recurrent, in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast, kindle the faith of the people you have made your own. Increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all might grasp and readily understand in what font we have been washed, by whose spirit we have been reborn, by whose blood we have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. They devoted themselves to teaching, to the teaching of the Apostles and to the communal life, to the breaking of bread and to the prayers. Awe came on everyone, and many wonders and signs were done through the Apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their property and possessions and divide them among all according to each one's need. Every day they devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple area and to breaking bread in their homes. They ate their meals with exultation and sincerity of heart, praising God and enjoying favor with all the people. And every day the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. And thanks be to God.
a reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in his great mercy gave us a new birth to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by the power of God are safeguarded through faith to a salvation that is ready to be revealed in the final time. In this you rejoice, although now, for a little while, you may have to suffer through various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that is perishable even though tested by fire, may prove to be for praise, glory, and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Although you have not seen him, you love him. Even though you do not see him now, yet believe in him, you rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy as you attain the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. On the evening of the first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you, are, you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God, Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book, 
But these are written, that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief, you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. How many times have we heard it said, there are no second chances? Well, today's gospel is about conversion and conviction from a personal encounter with the love and mercy of God, a God of miracles and second chances. I was lucky enough to be there for the birth of each of my children. That moment, in each case, was a blessing. One I witnessed firsthand and I hope never to forget. Have you had similar moments? Something memorable and impactful, a once in a lifetime experience. For any of these, especially a birth, it's a miracle to be there for the miracle to witness it firsthand. Without knowing precisely when, we experience something firsthand in that moment that couldn't be described in a convincing way otherwise. And so it was for Thomas. Jesus came to the disciples in the upper room. They were scared and alone, waiting and wondering. Miraculously, as we read, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But Thomas wasn't there. Thomas missed the moment and the miracle. But can we imagine the scene when he returned? Likely the disciples were still giddy with joy. And what happened next? They said, we have seen the Lord. What? Huh? We've seen the Lord. Really, that's it. That's the best they've got for him. Are any of you engineers or scientists or married to an engineer? Peter knew fishing. Matthew knew taxes. And Judas knew treason. But Thomas was a builder, an architect, an engineer. Thomas knew facts and firm foundations. He sought verification the same way some of us do. That's who Thomas was. Jesus knew Thomas and Jesus knew this. Jesus knew that Thomas was in search of firm facts, like a first century inspector Joe Friday from Dragnet who wanted just the facts, ma'am. You know, somehow growing up, I don't know about you, but I had always been taught that Thomas was doubting. I think that's wrong. I don't think he was doubting at all. Thomas wanted to verify. Heck, he needed to verify because the folks telling him, his own friends, well, they just weren't all that convincing. The other apostles, you see, didn't tell Thomas what they believed. They didn't evidence their faith by exuberance, by action, by evangelization, or stirring witness. They simply didn't evidence the fact that they had been forever changed by their personal encounter with the person of Jesus Christ, the risen Lord. No, the other disciples failed to convince Thomas from their own conviction of faith. Thomas wasn't there, and all they've got for him is, we have seen the Lord. Also, I don't consider Thomas doubting, because everything that we are told he asked for by saying, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. 
this is not a new set of demands that Thomas comes up with on his own. No, go back and look at the gospel. In fact, if you're watching this as a replay, please hit pause. Get up. Yes, I'm serious. Go grab your Bible and look at the end of John's gospel. Look for yourselves. When Jesus enters the room, he first searches out and finds the apostles. It's Jesus who makes the preemptive offer. He comes through the door, and then what? Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and side. Thomas did not come up with these verification criteria. Jesus did. Jesus offered them first. Thomas simply cashes in on the same offer that Jesus himself made preemptively to the other disciples. One that Jesus lovingly makes again personally. A second time when he encounters Thomas. Jesus, merciful Jesus, gives Thomas a second chance to experience the miracle himself firsthand. Jesus comes back to give Thomas his own personal encounter. Jesus searches him out just as he searches each of us out. Jesus makes this a moment of conversion. It is not a moment of doubt at all. But man, oh man, once Thomas was convinced, once he had verified, Thomas was on fire. He offers his own resounding amen, saying, My Lord and my God. His was a complete conversion with a firm foundation. Without Thomas, Without his conviction and missionary discipleship, much of the church in the East and India wouldn't exist. They'd not have known Christ. Without Thomas to go bravely and evangelize, telling the people of India, well, we wouldn't have Father Benoit. You see, Thomas convincingly convinced many others, given his own second chance encounter. So maybe don't focus on Thomas doubting, because I don't think he did. He asked for the same thing that Jesus had offered. And maybe don't focus on the unfortunate fact that the other apostles failed in their first evangelization. We all do. Instead, tell me that the risen Christ loved Thomas so very much that he came a second time to the upper room. Jesus came back. He came back just for Thomas. This God of second chances, this God who told us that if he would leave the 99 to search out one lost sheep, this Jesus who meets each of us where we are and leaves none of us alone came back. In his infinite mercy, Jesus seeks out and invites Thomas to believe, just as he does each of us, again and again, even now amidst this pandemic. Brothers and sisters, we can each learn from Thomas. We learn that a firm foundation of faith plus personal encounter provokes fundamental change and with conversion comes a conviction for sharing this, our faith. A conviction to share with others one that cannot be stopped. Jesus invites each of us in a personal encounter to be converted and then to go and convert others like Thomas. Thank God for St. Thomas and from him, Father Benoit. Thank God that Jesus doesn't give up on us. Thank God for his divine mercy and that our God was and is truly a God of second chances. Amen.
Sisters and brothers, together let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty. May grant that of them earth, of all things visible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, the Lord of the Father before all ages, God of God, life of life, true God of true God, the God in my Consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came out of heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was the glory of the Virgin Mary, and he came in. For our sake, he was crucified by the righteous path. He suffered death and was buried. He rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in the Lord to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom has no end. I believe the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and Son, who the Father and Son is adored and glorified, and has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. I accept the baptism and the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Confident that God draws near to us as we long to experience the love of the risen Lord more fully, more completely, more deeply and more personally, we present now our prayers and petitions. For Pope Francis and Archbishop Lori, may Holy Spirit protect them from evil and fortify them as our shepherds. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all first responders, doctors, nurses, and emergency personnel, as well as the first providers, those janitors, medical technicians, truck drivers, and store clerks who keep our hospitals open and our con economy operating during this crisis. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. For the protection of all human life from the moment of conception to the moment of natural death, we pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. For all those families who are expecting or recently gave birth to a child during this pandemic, May we each remember them daily as they await holy baptism, the gateway to life in the spirit for their precious child. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For this parish's candidates and catechumens, that they may be at peace and prayerfully await the sacraments. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For all baptized Catholics, especially all of us, that in these troubled times we always remember our call to be priest, prophet, and king by living and actively sharing the faith of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick at home or in hospitals and those quarantined, may they never doubt the healing miracle of Jesus' love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all the dead be led through the Lord's passion and cross to the glory of his Easter resurrection. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Gracious God, bring us to the fullness of life. Even here, let us taste the blessings that you will bestow in abundance on all who believe. Turn our hearts and our minds, our lives and our love more fully toward you, from whom we receive these blessings for which we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
these sisters and brothers that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord have the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your, your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up, up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day, above all, to lord you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers, with the angelic hosts, sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim.
us of salvation, giving thanks that you have found us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and William our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face, and mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed Apostles, with St. Lawrence, St. John Paul II, St. Faustina, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray. From every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus the Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of our Lord Jesus be with each of you. And with your spirit. Say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
we continue to keep each and every one of you, our parishioners, in prayer, especially those who are suffering more acutely because of the coronavirus, those of you who may have lost friends or relatives to the virus, those who are suffering from the virus, even among them, some of you, our parishioners. We certainly are praying for you and for the whole world. We look forward to the day when we can physically gather again at the altar to celebrate the life-giving gift of Jesus in the Eucharist. Jesus gives himself to us as the means of divine mercy. Tomorrow, Sunday, we will celebrate the Feast of Divine Mercy. Here in the parish, there will be, via the internet, uh, a special praying of the Divine Mercy Chaplet. And I've been asked to remind you that those of you who seek the graces of an indulgence, uh, on that feast day may do so in these circumstances when we cannot gather physically by making a true and complete act of contrition and by making a spiritual communion each with the result that at the soonest possible opportunity you will go to confession and come to receive the Eucharist. The sauce and summit of our life, the sauce, Jesus, of divine mercy for us all. Lastly, I do just want to thank each and every one of you for your continued support of the parish. We have truly been heartened to see that so many of you are contributing uh, to the material well-being and sustenance of the parish, sending in your normal Sunday collection envelopes via the mail, or contributing online via our electronic giving app. We really are grateful to see so many even perhaps in your own needs, still being so very aware of the needs of the parish for its continued operation in this time of restriction and sacrifice. Thank you. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, with your you. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy 